equipo. You know, I was really worried when I was putting this show together that it was going to be a really slow news week and I'd have to be, you know, digging around for truffles news. Um, and uh, nope, nope. Then uh, then this week happened and <laughs> everything's fine. Yeah, the news exploded, didn't it? <laughs> right. So let's get right on into it with, I'd say, possibly the number one story coming out. Uh, Halo Infinite has been delayed until 2021. Why? What are you doing? Um, it will no longer be a launch title with the Series X. Uh, will Turtle said during a press release, quote, there will be thousands of games to play on the Series X, spanning four generations when Xbox Series X launches globally this November. And over 100 optimized for Xbox Series X titles built to take full advantage of our most powerful console are planned for this year. Um, so good and bad news. Good news. We have a month now that we know when the Series X is coming out. That's a breadcrumb that so, I appreciate. Wait, so how much longer have they got now? Have they put up their sleeve? How much more time? With, in regards to what? From when Halo was going to be announced, like, come out to when it is. The well, I assume it was going to come out in November. Um, but now it's going to not come out till next year. So, oh, so the don't... Series X is still coming out in November, but Halo isn't. I'm going to guess February. Really? I reckon February to combat the whole Horizon Zero Dawn thing. Oh, yeah. do, you reckon do you reckon it's a strategical move? No, no, no because no, they just... cop flack for this trailer that we're watching right now. Is this the first time that an Xbox has launched without a Halo title? No, see, no, that's the thing. The only time a Halo title has been at launch was the very first Halo on the very first Xbox. Was there not a Halo launched on no. the 360? Halo 3 came no. out after, after the game. They all came out. This was going to be the second time that a, a Xbox system launched with a Halo game, but not anymore. Um, I mean, it is COVID year. Nothing's going right for anyone. We can't, like, you know, dig our claws in too much, but... <laughs> I mean, uh, they need more time to render that guy's beard. Yeah. Like, it was shit. <laughs> like, obviously, we don't know if this is in direct relation to the, um, the, the, what's the word that clap? I keep thinking clap track, but I think, no, clap, that's clap a, track. That's yeah. a guy out the of clap. Like, Borderlands. Yeah. No, what do I think? The, 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 the negative, uh, reviews that the trailer got, uh, because it looked like a 360 game. Um, <laughs> in some people's opinion, I'm not casting aspersions here. Uh, they were getting angry. At, at like a, probably a 720p video that I watched on YouTube. <laughs> but like it did, the gameplay looked good. The cutscenes did need some work. Obviously, it needed some work. And the fact that they've made this decision suggests that they, they knew it needed a lot of work. Like if they're showcase, I said this last show, if they're showcasing this as part of their big Xbox reveal and people are going, nah, then they made the right choice in delaying it. I reckon this is all they've made of the game, the trailer. <laughs> it's just like one little world part, and they're like, dude, we're really running behind. And they're like, I've got the COVID. So, uh, <laughs> good decision. We're all in agreement that this was probably the right decision to make. Yeah. I, I said, I'm one of those people who does not care about game release dates. Get the game right. I'm fine with that. There are so many games coming out all the time that, uh, as for someone like me, I don't need a game out when it, it says it's going to be out. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. It hasn't ruined my childhood. It hasn't, you know, <laughs> hasn't like, you know, killed my parents or anything. It's just, it, it is what it is. It doesn't matter, guys. Like, stop being turkey goblins about it. I uh, want. Well, that's the thing. I haven't heard much negative publicity about this. Uh, oh, really? A I lot just, of the I'm stuff, sorry, guys. <laughs> A lot of the score, I haven't been into YouTube comments because that's a place I dare not go. Uh, but from what I can gather, a lot of people are going, yeah, good, good call. Because they've also announced that in order to protect their development team from crunch, uh, they want to give the game more time to get it right. So they're actually being very conscious and not putting their uh, their very talented game developers under the, the stress of having to meet a deadline. Yeah, crunch has become the villain, hasn't it? Have and you and so it should be. Like, no, I, and everyone's like, you know, Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog, make the best games. Yeah, they, they crunch everyone. And now they're like, everyone's like, crunch is shit. And Naughty Dog's like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, how are we going to make games now if we can't exploit our workers? I think the general public has become, like the consumer has become a lot more uh, accepting of delays now, knowing that they're going to get a better product. Mm, maybe Naughty and not. I mean, there's still going to be those people that, um, that jump out there and and want to and yell and scream about it, and I haven't got my thing when you said I was going to get my thing. But I think the majority of people now will be like, that's, you know what, that's okay. There's a lot of games to play. They're just little kids, though, that are just like the spoiled brats of the universe. <laughs> I don't know. I know plenty of big kids. Big, yeah. big spoiled kids. Yeah. I know a few. Oh, the grappling hook is a, a nice addition to this game. I like a bit of uh, traversing with a grappling hook. Especially if you can tether the grappling hook to something and make it, make it physics out. I really liked Just Cause 3. 
Just cause. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so what do we think this means for the Series X? <laughs> we um, have spoken a couple of times about how some of us, me included, uh, don't particularly see the need to buy one as I own an Xbox One S uh, and it's been said by Phil Spencer that for the first two years, no Series X exclusives. You'll be able to play it all. It'll all be on Games Pass. Games Pass is the thing they're pushing. Consoles are now <clears throat> pretty much just an, uh, a delivery system for them. They're not really focused on the sales. Um, does this mean that it's made up uh, a lot of people's minds who are sort of on the fence of getting a PS5 or a Series X at launch? Has it now made it easy to go, right, sweet, PS5 it is? Yeah, I think they've just made it. There's no real, um, there's no instant need to have one. Besides better graphics, because it is yeah. a more powerful machine from what we've seen. And there will always be, those people will always be there anyway, like the uh, the people that need to have the latest and the greatest, the early adopters. They'll be there no matter what happens. So they'll grab that uh, console no matter what games are coming out anyway. Or they'll buy a PC. Or they'll buy a PC <laughs> and then I've rule had this, it over everyone. I've had this thought recently. I keep on jumping between which one I think is best. Mm -hmm. Like I really like, you know, they make an announcement. I'm like, oh, that's really good. They're going great. And then another one makes an announcement. Like, oh, that's really good. And then one of them makes a mistake. I'm like, you're an idiot. And um, I've re I've come to this conclusion. I, I sat down and thought about it the other day. And I was like, is it just that there is not, like, because everyone's going like, who's going to win the console? Is it just that there isn't a war happening at the moment? No. Oh, is there a war? No, there is a war. No, they're, but they're I, I, th I think that they're like, uh, oh, no, I'll put it a different way. Like each, each company has and Nintendo included have basically set the the parameters of what it is to be a winner and every one of them is different they're all fighting a different war yeah they so so you know by Xbox is doing the active <clears throat> users thing um PlayStation is doing like the console and the graphics or whatever and exclusive games and that and then um Nintendo is just like who makes the most money <laughs> <laughs> and um they're all, at the end of the game, when they all come out, all of them are going to claim that they're the winner because they have all won in the, they're creating their own rules. It's, it's, it's like, like small business, like I've learned. Like you can't, you can never win against another business because where do you count as winning? And that's what's happening here. We have to stop going, who, stop thinking about who's winning and start digging in the laws of what is, who, what, what you have to do to win. Mm. And, like, the, the public should do that. They should do it a, a group thing and when everyone like, votes on what do you want out this console generation and then the consoles have to do that why, why, to why win. Can't, why can't we just buy the console we want and not have to worry about a war? Why, yeah. why did well, they was well, Then what are we going to talk about on the show? Why can't we all <laughs> just get along? Well, we can talk about Games Pass and xCloud because X Pass is... is, is, is X Pass. X Pass is, X is the, the nickname I've given Games Pass for when it comes to X Cloud. X Pass out. Anyway, it's here. It's out now. You can play it. What? If you weren't in a stupid country with oh. bad internet. That's right. Uh, the uh, the old Australian internet has forbidden us from playing uh, our old Games Pass games on every device. Uh, well, every device apart from Apple devices. Are you talking about X Cloud, not Game Pass? I'm or talking about every device. I'm talking about Games Pass on X Cloud. XCloud's a big cloud that you can play your Games Pass games on. So is, can you log into XCloud in something, say, like a, an, a, a Switch? No, that's not on there yet. But oh. you can. Uh, well, you, you can't. But you could have done it, uh, played it on your phone or on your TV okay. or on. But you can't because Apple have said, no, it goes against our terms and conditions. Uh, you cannot play Xbox X Cloud games uh, on our devices, which you know caused a little bit of controversy um, because Apple were, were accused. Obviously, Apple and Microsoft are, are bitter enemies, and they're never really going to get along. Um, so they basically just put a stone wall in there and said, "No, nope, not on our devices." Uh, and then something happened today, which again put Apple in a bit of a sticky situation. And I really like the way that this uh, this came out. So I, when I woke up this morning, this news broke. Uh, it was, well, late uh, Australian time, late last night, uh, Epic announced that they were cutting 20% off the price of V-Bucks in their game Fortnite. So for those of you who don't know, V-Bucks is the in-game currency that you use, uh, that you buy with real money in order to purchase skins, uh, just cosmetic skins. Uh, they, they chopped 20% off. Uh, and so this is for everyone. So if you play on a console like an Xbox or a PS4, uh, you went in there and you saw the new price. If you play on a mobile phone, uh, say for example an Apple iPhone, and you went to buy some V-Bucks, um, it came up with an option. You could pay through Apple 
uh, which was the old price, or pay Epic Direct, which was the new 20% off price. And what uh, Epic had done, stop shaking your head, Floppy. It's very no, distracting. Actually, seriously, Floppy, I was really You need to listen to this. this. It's this actually impressive. I'm listening. So stop shaking your head. I'll break your other arm. <laughs> uh, so uh, it had uh, paying uh, the normal price through Apple or paying Epic Direct. Uh, what Epic have done had put almost like a back door in where you bypass Apple's uh, percentage system where Apple takes 30% of every transaction that happens uh, and said, uh, yeah, that money comes straight to us now and Apple didn't cut a cut at all. So then Apple this morning took Fortnite off the App Store and issued a statement, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, saying basically... Um, Epic has updated their app and put in something that wasn't quality tested by our uh, stringent guidelines and has broke those guidelines. And all they are doing is trying to get a better deal. Uh, here at Apple, everyone falls under the same umbrella. Everyone has the same rule so we can guarantee the safety of everyone. Of which <laughs> Epic, who obviously were waiting for this, <laughs> put out a uh, 50 second short film that it already made <laughs> titled, oh good, you got it. 1980 Fortnite, based off the movie 1984, which is, of course, uh, George Orwell's uh, dysto future dystopian with Big Brother and surveillance and one entity rules everything. Um, and just, you can see it on the screen here, side by side, 1984 trailer with the Apple trailer with the big guy in the Apple uh, in the Fortnite trailer being an Apple. Yes, Braden? This goes even deeper than that. Are you ready? Yeah. That's not even 1984, the film. That's an Apple ad from yes. 1984. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they mocked that and then came out with a press release, again, I'm paraphrasing, saying, um, like, we did this. It's not about money. We, we have enough money. Like, they're worth something like $6 billion, Epic Games, and they also, one of their uh, owners is Tencent, which is the biggest game company in the world. Uh, they own 40%. So they don't need money. What this is about and what they're pushing for... Freedom! <laughs> no. Uh, what they're pushing for is the ridiculous 30% take that Apple and Google Play take from every single game for every single uh, transaction that transpires through that store. And all Epic is saying is like, no, enough is enough. Uh, we're using our power and our muscle that we clearly have <laughs> to actually call, um, you know, put the spotlight on this and, and let everyone see what uh, this company is doing and how much of a monopoly uh, monopoly they're making and how they've got a stranglehold on the business and we're not doing this anymore and they're suing Apple to make a point. This is mind-blowing amazing that uh, uh, this is the first time a company has had the power to be able to stand up one of these massive behemoths and actually do this. This is so good. It, I've been watching this news all day and like, think about Fortnite what you like. I don't care. It's the fact that someone is is standing up for literally the little guy, for all the little game devs who, who want to make something someday of their thing. Uh, oh, I, I'm just blown away by this. Mm. I love that it's not another company like Microsoft or something that has... Like this massive behemoth that's been around for years and years and years. It's epic. Yeah, it's the Fortnite guys. They have. They're the only people that could take like do this kind of well. They a attack on this thing because like the pro the Apple has such a you know a footing and Google because they have so much money, but mm. Epic has enough enough a lot of money as well. So and they like got the backing of Tencent, which basically owns the planet. So <laughs> yeah, so this is like the only person that could really challenge these two people. And they're doing it. They are sticking to their guns and they are doing it. And like, I just want to applaud Epic for it. I mean, all right, yeah, they're a big corporation, but yeah, no one else could could do that. It, it's yeah, that's quite I mean. mind-blowing. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to see where this goes. Uh, just, man, the fact that they baited them, the fact they had that short Dude, ready to go. This short is genius. Yeah. Whoever came up with, okay, we're going to, we're going to call them out from their own ad. Mm. It's incredible. Yeah. I highly recommend everyone go and read up I, on see, this. It's like, great. It's the fact that it was waiting there. They were waiting. Yeah. They knew what was going to happen. They just went, got him, uh, and were, ruled it they in. They were fishing for snook. It, it's, it how was, you do, it's how you catch a good snook. Fantastic. <laughs> a snook. <laughs> All right, back to uh, Xbox. Um, and we've known about, it's probably the worst keep secret this generation launch, or uh, well, this next generation launch, uh, that... Xbox Lockhart was going to come out, which was going to be a cheaper or digital version of the Series X. Um, I want to say these boxes leaked, but 
they're actually available to purchase in some stores in America. <laughs> They've released the Series X, uh, <laughs> Series X controller, and on the back it says it's compatible with Series X and Series S. So Microsoft's confirmed the Lockhart without, without any fanfare, just by sending out a right. controller into the wilderness. <laughs> do you think it was on purpose, or do you think it was a mistake? No, they, they, they could have made an event out of this. Like they could have made, they could have got a bit of like. Huff and giggle out of it, and they just stuffed it. I dare say what's happened is these were slotted to go out around this time before all the COVID stuff happened. Yeah, and they just forgot to go, whoa, 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 stop. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Didn't stop that one. Yeah, so, like, I mean, they've got a lot on. Uh, Something slipped through, but we can see in the top middle there, Xbox Series X slash S. Uh, so I guess that's confirmation. Uh, the fact that it's a white controller indicates that maybe it's going to be white, which is what many people thought. Um, floppy. We still don't know what it's going to be though, do we? We just know that it exists. No, um, but I mean, again, it's the worst case. No, so there's no, yeah. cause when they said box, when this first announced, they said box. I thought they meant the box is in the console. Cause oh. people just call it the yep. box. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and I, that, and it has, cause it has that little half box graphic. That everyone's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, is that what they released? Like an accidental photo of the half box? I no. thought that was a GameCube. Can no. we call it half box from now on? Half sex box. Half mongrel. Um, speaking of mongrels, remember the Atari VCS? Re- remember that? About two years ago, that Kickstarter went up from one of the many people who own the Atari <coughs> license. They were bringing the Atari back to the next generation. We've often spoken about this machine. Yeah, yeah. Um, how it's... It's a bit of a joke, really. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I, I actually find it unnecessary. It's like yeah. it's, it's like putting all your uh, effort and design into like a new ColecoVision. Like, or an Intellivision. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's putting all the effort into something that people don't want. Yeah. Uh, well, you can get one now if you do want it. They've uh, put out the uh, pre-order pricing. So an Atari VCS can be yours if you'd like to pre-order now for the bargain price of $849 <laughs> Australian. <laughs> But if that's a little bit too steep, you know, if you know you want to get a, a, a PlayStation Five for probably that price, um, you can get you can get the cheaper one, which is only six hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh. Um, so you can get that. It just doesn't come with any controllers, so you can use your telekinetic powers in order to control it. Then, <laughs> and, and it comes with games. What come on, guys! They've got games shit. that have eight colors. Like it's pretty good. <laughs> what is going like? I. In the uh, uh, it's Facebook, actually not eight colors. It's probably four. <laughs> in our Facebook uh, comments, uh, you, which you can join over in facebook.com backslash hack the dino or over in our Discord at bit.ly backslash hack the dino, we were talking about this and I remember someone mentioned that this is the uh, weirdest grift uh, they've ever seen. Like, it's clearly <laughs> never going to release. Um, I you was reckon? talking. Oh, well, I think I it reckon will it'll release. release for one week. Yeah. And they'll like. Couple of people will buy them, and then they're like, "We've made a huge error." So, just to have a look at um, some of the the hiccups this company has had along the way with this console, uh, it's been delayed numerous times. Which, okay, that's that's fair enough. Two years ago at Gamescom, they announced that you'll be able to see a physical model of it to prove that it was actually happening, and it was just a plastic case. <laughs> I think it wasn't made. It was just a plastic case. You couldn't play it. You walked into a hotel room. It was on the table. The journalist got to sit down and sort of look at it and take a photo and then get out. Get out. It wasn't hooked up to anything. And then I was talking to a friend of the show, Mr. A-Game, before, uh, because he's been following this as well, because funny. And uh, he said his favorite thing, that he, fo- he forwarded me to a Reddit thread, which I forgot to grab. Uh, but a, a person who had a game out on the ice, uh, Apple uh, ice store, ice store? App Store, um, <laughs> he was watching the trailer and they announced his game was coming to the VCS. And he went, hang on, I didn't develop that. What? What? They, they've, they've taken a game and put it on the, or announced it for the VCS. And the actual game owner <laughs> said, that's the first I've heard about it. <laughs> Oopsies. So, yeah, because someone just would have made a list and someone would have grabbed it and gone, are these the games on there? Yeah, probably. Let's do they it. showed it. They physically showed it during their trailer. Ooh. And there's a reaction on uh, on Reddit uh, in one of the Reddit things that uh, has him sort of like talking about it. it. It's oh man, what are they doing? I hope they do a pitfall. I, I reckon it's a safe bet. What well, we can play pitfall on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I think Atari's business is going to be a pitfall. Yeah. Oh dear. <sighs> well, you know whose business isn't in a pitfall. In fact, the very opposite. Good old buddy boy Nintendo. Uh, they released mm-hmm. their financials for the year. 
Oh, well, the financial year, funnily enough. And they have seen their profits increase. I got this incorrect. They've seen their profits increase by 556% on this time last year. Did they just not do anything last year? No, they sold 22.4 million copies of a game. And that game's Animal Crossing. <laughs> Stupid game. Um, so you look at it, you, you've got Animal Crossing selling 22.4 million copies, irrespective of what you think of the game yet. Yeah, that is impressive. Oh, it's incredibly um, impressive. You have got uh, the Switch about to overtake the NES or <laughs> ANES in sale. In fact, it probably has by now. So it's probably just behind the Wii in sales numbers. Uh, you have got Animal Crossing outselling. Uh, so one game, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, has sold more copies than the entire Metroid series combined. <laughs> Even more than Metroid Prime. All of them. <laughs> All, of them. <laughs> All of them to put together have not sold as much as Animal Crossing. And they will probably continue to keep selling more. All Nintendo has to do is just like cause COVID every year. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that your conspiracy theory? Well, I'm pretty sure Nintendo created it for yes, Animal I Crossing. <laughs> so, it makes sense to me. Is that the most they've sold of any game ever? Like, what about Wii Sports? No, 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 no. Well, I mean, can you count that? Because that's a pack-in. So I, don't I mean, know if I guess I mean it was bought, wasn't it? It was bought with the console, but yes, but no. Is it the is that the largest amount of copies they've sold of a singular game that wasn't packaged with the console? Well, I, well, where do you draw the line there? Because I've bought Super Mario Brothers about ten times. Why? So just buy it once. Well, no, because <laughs> I like it and I'm happy to throw my money at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty impressive. That must be that the biggest amount of sold in the shortest period of time, though. You would think that it holds some kind of record, yeah. yes. Um, I haven't done that research, uh, so uh, Floppy can do that. Uh, so, you know, Nintendo, well done. Good job. Good Cyberpunk, on you, guys. Yeah, little, little guy well done. fighting back. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, released some really cool uh, features for their cutscenes. Uh, in a September 2020 issue of the official PlayStation magazine, uh, it's revealed that players can influence how a scene plays out and not just by the choices they make, but how they act. So, for example, players can look around their surroundings for visual clues as to what's going on in a cutscene. So, for example, if you stay locked onto the face of an NPC you're talking to, you may not realize another is coming up behind you to attack you. However, if you're looking around, you may spot this before it happens. However, being too angsty or jumpy in certain situations will presumably also have its disadvantages. So what we're learning from that, besides the fact whoever wrote this put too many howevers in that paragraph. <laughs> uh, However. I didn't write it. Oh, okay. However. I copied it off the internet like a real journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a journalist. Mm. And uh, I quote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what we're seeing is that uh, cutscenes are going to be fully interactive in cyberpunk um, and that uh, you may even do some detective in while you're looking at it. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I think it sounds really cool now, and I think it's going to be annoying in the game. Yep. I, really? I can't stand um, choices. I, I've come to the conclusion, and I was talking about this about one of my co-workers the other day, I can't stand choice in games. I want a, a story told to me the way it's supposed to be told. I, don't, I think um, having branching story trees dilutes a good story. Down, well, especially like the Assassin's Creeds and stuff, like the Odyssey and stuff like that, where you can branch off into like you and you can bypass whole chunks of the story and all stuff like that. I don't want that. I want a well-crafted story to be told to me. I don't want to like worry in cutscenes. Most of the time, I just want to listen to the cutscene. I don't want to think, oh man, should I be looking at this person? Should I be looking around? Oh, hang on, what did they say? Oh no, there's someone's attacking me now. Oh, now I look twitchy. twitchy. Like, I just want to, yeah, break. Everyone has had that experience when they're playing a game, watching a cutscene, sitting back, relaxing, and all of a sudden a quick time event happens. Yeah, that's ba <laughs> it's basically forcing that on me. And it, I think it's going through the Grand Theft Auto V thing again where they're just giving you too many things you can do and you just won't end up doing any of the fun stuff. We should just uh, say that none of us have played this game yet, so we don't actually know yeah, if but that's the A case. lot of the stuff I keep hearing about it is like, and everything I see about it, it's just something different you're doing in it. And I'm like, ah, oh, it looks so tiring. <laughs> like, <laughs> exhausting. It, it, it looks exhausting. It looks like I have to put so much time in it. It looks like I have to write, you know, read a PhD, get a thesis on buddy coding to just like to do one part of it and stuff like that. I don't know. Well, I am going to play it. Don't get me wrong. And hopefully, oh. it won't be any of these things. And I'll just be, I'll be, and I'll be like, oh, I hate my hat. It's just a cool game that I can just play. But what do you think, Floppy? I'm, I'm much. I'm, I get nervous about it, like Dan does. It, there's so much I'm changing, there's so much, <laughs> and there's so much different. I like the cool things that I hear, but then I think about them all being in the same game, 
and it feel if to me it feels like it's going to be too complex, too many new things, and I'm not going to grasp them all. Yeah. I, like, I really like the um, the civilization way of doing things. Every time they do a new civilization, they have thirty. I think it's like thirty percent the same, thirty percent tweaked, and thirty percent new. And I feel like this game is just all new. Mm. No, I just feel like every you're gonna it's going to be like a constant tutorial. You're constantly going to have to be learning shit in the game. Like you're not going to be able to like hone and shine up on moves. You're just going to keep getting new things to do, keep getting new things to do. Forget that. Do it once, never do it again, again because there's so much to do. We haven't played this game yet, so I don't know how you can make that assumption. Oh, it's true. I, I, I can't make that assumption. I just, from what I've seen, I feel, and I'm worried that that might happen. Braden? I, for one, weirdly, with all my anxiety in regards to some games being too wide and too much going on and everything, um, I am... I, on the edge of my seat for this game. I cannot wait. Oh, I really want to play it. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. Like my, um, And I'll know in 20 minutes if I like it. My ideas of what it might be aside, like I'm looking forward to playing it and, and experiencing this world and seeing what I find and like hopefully being wrong about my assumptions. Cool. I think we should all just go into it with open minds and open hearts and yeah. love everyone before we shoot that robot hooker. I'm going to open it Can like a robot Can you play in third hooker. person? No. So you can see what your character looks no. like? Well, that's why you can look around the cutscenes. You can look at a mirror. <laughs> Looking into mirrors? Do you know who else likes to look into mirrors? Bing. D- downloadable <laughs> content for, for Doom likes to do that. What a segue. Anyway, here it is. It's called Ancient Gods, part one. We'll see the full trailer uh, next week on August 27th. And uh, it, it, it's more stuff that you can shoot with a gun. Yeah, this is all this trailer is. I just looked and went, okay. So these are the people I'm going to kill? Yep. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a story? Take it out. <laughs> <laughs> really, if any game didn't need a story, it's Doom. Yeah. I mean, the original Doom. Like, it did have a story? It didn't, did it? Like, it didn't even, there was nothing. We're was- still thinking that it's a game of the year contender, Doom Eternal? Um, it's definitely up there. Against I mean, Ghost it's a really, 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 really good Doom with an actual story. How can it lose? <laughs> Against Ghost of Tsushima, though? Ghost of Tsushima is pretty good. Yeah, I'll give it that. I don't know. It's going to be, I reckon those two are going to be in the top three. Might yep. be that, that that magical game that's about to come out that we don't know about that, like, Valve is going to drop. <laughs> Animal Crossing you know, just, 3. They're just going to do one. Oh, right. Half-Life okay. 3. Oh, right. Half-Life 3. That's coming? Yeah. It's not. Do you know what else is coming? Suicide Me. Squad. Suicide Squad. Um, yeah, Rocksteady finally announced that they are making a Suicide Squad game, which was heavily rumoured. What got me interested was this poster. Now, for those of you listening to the podcast, it's a picture of Superman sort of looking away and the Suicide Squad crosshairs uh, focused on the back of his head, implying to me that maybe one of the missions or the game might be to take down the Superman. Do you know what I thought this straight away as soon as I saw it? Mm. Red Sun Superman or like the um, Injustice Superman. Well, I had someone go, oh, it kind of looks like Bizarro. I've seen a lot of talk online in regards to like who this could be and like some people just being like, can we all just calm down for a second? Just be like, cool, it might be Superman. Yeah, cool. <laughs> or Black Adam with a cape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Braden, you're pretty excited about this, aren't you? I am ecstatic. Um, we haven't heard from Rocksteady at all since Arkham Knight, back when like the PS4 oh. first launched. So that's five years ago? Yup. Yep, so oh, this so could this... literally drop at any time. This is that exactly. game they were just they were teasing yeah. about. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. They, they were teasing this yonks ago, and everyone was like, oh, cool, they're probably working on a Suicide Squad game. I really hope it doesn't have that Batman combat in it. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely will. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's it's been so quiet for so long, and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, we're doing this. We're in, we're revealing it at DC Fandome, uh, which is like next week, I think. And like, and then there's also rumors of uh, if I can jump to this Ben as yeah, well. Yeah, go for it. Uh, there's also rumors that uh, uh, Nether Realm might be announcing Injustice Three. Yeah, and uh, there's teasing of that as well. Oh, those comics are so good. I do like a good Injustice game. Yep, Tom Taylor. I give him responsibility for everything to do with injustice because it's just him. Give him DC. I mean, I'm just <laughs> well, fight, well, fight no, everyone else. He's too busy. Uh, well, <laughs> he's too busy writing for DC and Marvel, and he's created our own series, The Deep, and he's created our own series, The Secret Seven, over at Bo- Boom, I think. Um, so yeah, Tom Taylor is a very busy man and a very talented one. Um, do you know he? he Pretty much, he's an Australian. Up- that's why we're talking about him. Yeah, uh, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he he came up with um, injustice. The comic when it was just a, a crappy video game tie-in, and it's one of the and best DC went, reasons. Yeah, now. they just went to it. Oh yeah, go for it. He had no editorial input at all. They just said, yeah, do what you want. 
So he got to craft this storyline and it became insanely popular and became a number one bestseller. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we keep it completely in stock at the shop all the time. We get the omnibuses of it. They sell every week. And if, you haven't, if you're a DC fan and you haven't read it, read it because it's got this indulgent streak in it that you won't get in another superhero one because he's allowed to do whatever he wants. So, yep. there, are so some, there are some deaths in it that are truly shocking. Yeah. So head on over and say hi to Tom Taylor. He's a nice man. He can balance a chair on his chin. Because he used to, he, he used to be in the circus. Really? Yeah, he was a circus performer. I like that Dick was going to be one of your odd yeah. segways. No, no. <laughs> Speaking of circuses. Speaking of segways. <laughs> uh, the circus one was good. <laughs> uh, the Avengers beta is out for everyone right now. No, but while it's you're gone. waiting, while you're waiting for no, for <clears> us it is. But for everyone else, everyone who's not special and got special codes. Uh, anyway, long story short. We got codes to play the Avengers beta last weekend, which we did, and we're going to give you our thoughts while you're waiting for that 26 gigs to download. (laughs) Is it out now? Yes, it's out now for everyone to play. So, Dan, what did you think of the Avengers beta? Oh, I've got some notes. Um, I really, really, really liked it. I've always, I've been an advocate for this, which is really weird because I'm not much of a a You're not a superhero dude at all. But for some reason, this really clicked with me straight away. I thought, number one, I like stuff set in the daytime, and I think that's what I like. <laughs> I don't like night scenes in anything, hey. Um, this started up, you get to play this 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 mission. Yeah, you, you, it sets you between, you know, Thor, Iron Man. You get to play a couple of them. You, get, you basically get to walk across a bridge is mm. the opening of this game, and I just found it so fun. You really get a um, – I'm just going to go into it really quickly because we're all going to kind of say the same things. Basically, this game is Warframe. If you guys haven't played Warframe, play it. It's really free and it's very, very similar to this. Third person um, Destiny style game where you're up, upgrading, 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 upgrading and you, you replay levels and stuff like that kind of vibe. But it also has its core story levels that you can play like the opening and some other ones. You only get one story level in it really. It's just the core yeah. opening one and mm. then it goes into just the, the grind the grind levels which will, are in between all the other yeah, levels. Yeah, so just before you continue, we'll, we'll go into what the beta actually had. So you, you played the first uh, level which we can see here on screen, uh, which is also the level we saw um, whenever this game was shown. A-day. The A-day a- disaster. A-day. So where you're going down the Golden Gate Bridge playing each of the heroes in turn, getting used to them and, and whatnot. Uh, then you jump forward in the story and you're playing as uh, the Hulk with Kamala Khan, and it's a story level uh, where you jump between those two did, as did, you infiltrate. Did you uh, notice yeah. they never called her Miss Marvel in the whole thing? Yeah. Because only Kamala? And yeah. I was like, sick it. That's awesome. Because, you know, like, there's Kamala Harris, uh, the vice president of Joe Biden at the moment. Yeah, oh, everyone's and I'm, like, and I'm like, hey, hey. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so those two levels, and then you got the opportunity to do the training. The was it the harm room? Yes. Uh, which is basically the danger room where you go up against holographic opponents and and hone your skills. I needed that anyone. once. Yeah, same. Uh, and then you got to go and do missions, which yeah, are basically and- capture the flag or destroy the bad guy. Yeah, destroy the bad guy. Um, stay in this spot. You yeah. know, like hey, we're just capture the flag. Yeah. But I really enjoyed some of them. Were like sort of short. I did some of them in like three minutes. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you got to rate them. I did like one, one. I, I like the really long, long levels. Um, I love this game. Did anyone else not like it? Uh, me. I mean, did, did, <laughs> did anyone not like it? And I can understand how it's not everyone's cup of tea. I thought it was really intuitive, even though every character played differently and actually differently. Like, you know, the flying people. I agree. They fly different, and but it's not hard to grasp. But it becomes really intuitive. Like mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, I'm going to jump into here and then you upgrade. So, you know, you do a power hit onto the ground. And then from there, you can do a dodge, the dodge button, man. And like every button does like different things. So if you hold a button, it does something. If you click a button quickly or you press a button with another button, they all do stuff. And they're all different for every character. But it's not so much it's like a fighting game. We can't remember what to do. You just kind of remember as you go. And it's got little markers on the side to tell you kind of what you do. It's just... Yeah, I'll agree with you. Um, before I go into what I thought of it, I will agree that the controls were really intuitive. I really enjoyed that. And I really enjoyed how each character had a different feel. Um, they've really done a really good job in making each character an individual and not just a cut, copy, paste. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and the idea that like there's going to be heaps of characters in the actual game and continually unlocking different codes and everything in this game is free there's no in-game yeah. purchasing you you win everything from like from just doing playing in the game it's mm. about like warframe yeah um 
I mean, you can buy stuff from Warframe, but we won't get into that. Um, and the <laughs> oh, other don't thing, worry, you'll be able to buy and stuff the, from here. Yeah. The one thing I want to say is, like, you're not building up one character. You are actually creating an Avengers team in the way that if I uh, upgrade, like, Iron <clears> Man <throat> and I unlock, you know, there's so many moves to unlock. You unlock, you know, like 10 moves or whatever. Um, when you play a level, you have to play with, like, four Avengers. And if you've unlocked Iron Man that much, if you play someone else, it will use your Iron Man that you have unlocked with your Iron Man's move sets. So you're not creating, uh, up, up, you're not upgrading and XPing one person. You're XPing a whole team. Mm. And you can think about that. You're like, well, I'll make this character. He's going to have lots of missile attacks and that. And then he'll be like, you know, he'll be able to fire stuff. And this is going to be my my tank character, Hulk, obviously. Yep. <laughs> like, Do you know what I didn't like about that though? Like, yes, you're building up a team, and yes, that's really cool that your your character that you've built up is part of that team. What I didn't like is when I was playing those team levels, they didn't talk to each other, so there was oh, no camaraderie. Oh. There was no interaction. But like, even just some generic one liners of like, uh, "Oh, watch your back," or just something. It was silent. You know, that actually oh, was in the start, like. I noticed that Tony Stark wasn't talking in the low screens mm. and stuff. I think it was an error because the more longer I played, longer and longer I played, suddenly all the characters started talking and I reckon it was just a, a, a beta problem because then they started bantering with each other in the levels. Oh, they did? Yeah. No, but even in the levels they didn't. No, no, in the level, no, but mine did by the, by, okay. I played it for like 10 hours. Right. So, uh, and I noticed that and I thought, oh, this must be a beta thing where they just haven't like yeah, put we in should, all the dialogue and this stuff. This is a beta, so not everything is in there. Because Kamala Khan is completely done. You notice how much she talks? Yeah, that was great. She talks heaps yeah. in it. And in all the cut scenes, she's like, ah, this is going to be wicked and all stuff like that. And then, and then I played as Tony Stark and it was silent the whole time. And I'm like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure Tony Stark's going to- Even when I was playing as Kamala and I had a team around me, I wanted them to talk to each other. No, yeah, they do. They, they start doing it. I think it's just a beta thing. Okay. So I, all right. Well, no. I'll go into my thoughts. Yeah, sorry, Floppy. You want to no, no, you're right. Something? You're right. I was going to my thoughts very, very quickly. Uh, like, first of all, this isn't my type of game. Um, and I, I think I was pretty open about that, that I didn't really think I was going to enjoy it. I, I'm not a fan of... Look, not that I'm not a fan of it. I've played superhero games for as long as they've been around. So for me, this was just... Ah, oh, another superhero game. I understand how this appeals to people who haven't done that sort of thing, um, much like Dan, who who isn't really into superheroes, but I've lived in these hero skins since I was eight years old. So I know these guys back to front. I know all their history and everything. You know, it might just be that it's a, I'm, I'm getting over it a little bit or uh, saturated a little bit. I don't know. But even the gameplay wasn't my type of thing. I'm not a big fan of linear um, tales. Uh, I like exploring. There were some donkey textures in spots. I was about to say, uh, I know this is a beta and I understand that, but man, the hair and the teeth looked off. I didn't mind the hair. No, like... It didn't bother me at all. There, there's some parts where Hulk's hair, uh, not Hulk's hair, uh, Thor's hair is just looking weird and the teeth, oh, the teeth. Kamala Khan's like, once you power her up a bit, some of her power attacks are so brutal like she just like you know fit like grabs someone and just does it with a big fist and just slams them into the ground over and, and a over. special as well where she grows really really big and it's just so stomps fun. on them and throws a tantrum at and them and then moves like a little bit slower yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like, everything I love those really balanced to detail. Like, um, the character models look so much better than they did on any pre-release footage we saw remember when they first debuted this and everyone went, oh they look a bit off trash. um I, I, I didn't like the look of them either, and people were saying, oh, it's just because you, you like the Marvel movies. No, it's not. I, I'm a comic book reader. I am used to characters looking different because not every artist brings the same characteristics to each character they draw. That's not the issue. The issue was that these character models looked off. They fixed that. Uh, Kamala Khan, again, Dan said she was 100% done. Superb. Uh, Black Widow looked really good beside her hair. Um, I oh. wasn't a fan of, of, of Iron Man, but Hulk looked great. Um, Banner, Banner's voice acting by Troy Baker was sensational. Yes. Um, yeah, like, that was really, really I good. all the banter and all the dialogue was like watching a Marvel film. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is this is good. The snippet I'm- of the storyline that we saw, I thought was really good. It, it, it grabbed me there. That little bit it of the storyline. It really felt like um, just the Winter Soldier storyline with the carrier just falling. Is that what happened in that, in Winter Soldier the movie? Like the carrier crashes into the water or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of that kind of vibe. Yeah. But, um. I did notice that some levels looked amazing and mm-hmm. some levels just looked like hot trash. Like, you know, there was just a room that you went to another room and another room. And I was like, this bit isn't very good. But yeah. then, then suddenly it opens out into a forest and the forest is like chronically good. Am I, <laughs> um, 
And yeah, explosions going on. I think all the story missions are going to be so good. Yeah. Like, again, a little bit too linear for me. The Hulk level where you're going through the AIM headquarters mm. and you're going up and up and up. It's like, oh, yeah, all right, more of the same. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, I got to the point where I started to get bored because you're just fight, coming up against these waves of characters coming in. Sometimes they've got a fancy gun, sometimes they don't. And you just have to do the same old technique. There was one point where you're the Hulk. All right, so this really annoyed me, actually. <laughs> you're playing as the Hulk. And you're coming up against either humans, uh, well, specifically on the bridge where you're coming up against humans. You're the Hulk, and you punch one of these guys in the head as the Hulk. And they get a little bit of energy taken off, and then get up and come at you again. You're the freaking Hulk. I don't care yeah, what- if they make you as tough as the Hulk, it's not going to be a very fun guy. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the other. You're the Hulk. If you punch a guy- that guy's getting vaporized. That's He's not I mean. getting like, up again. If you're as strong, if you're if you're as OP as the Hulk is in, in real life, it's not going to be much of a game. You still want to play as the Hulk. in in real life. Well, no, just <laughs> a little bit of no, but a little bit of continuity. Like yeah, the no, I, I get big you, thing, I, I any medium that I consume uh, or any fiction that I consume is you set rules for your universe, and if you have those rules, then you need to stick to them. All right. Yep. This dude can fly. Awesome. Okay, this dude's super strong, can break a bus in half. Fantastic. But if that dude can break a bus in half and then punches a guy in the face and that guy gets up and goes... You know, oh, they, were, they were augmented robots. No, no, there were humans in the first one. Oh, on oh, the well. bridge scene. On the bridge scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, see, that doesn't bother me, that kind of thing, because it is a... Um, I did like that every now and then it really surprised me, that, like, I would be the Hulk and I'd press a button and he would... You'd be funny, a giant spider tank, and he'd actually grab the whole tank, pick it up, and throw it around. I was like, oh, oh, right? Um, yeah, on that, Ben, I just had an interesting thought. If, like, in sequences like the start where Hulk is busting up some human fools, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> would you What's prefer. What's that? Pimp Braden? <laughs> would, you, would you prefer if, in, like, the, those sort of scenarios, especially, like, story scenarios, not when you're playing multiplayer? Um, if you're having scenarios where the Hulk can just absolutely one hit humans, but someone like Black Widow or someone has a lot of trouble with like robot enemies or something. Yeah, she, just, she was definitely weaker. Like, I, yeah, but she moved faster and more fluently. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, look, I would prefer, like, they went to a strange here. We're watching at the moment Captain America fighting. He felt great fighting. Too bad yeah. he dies. Funny Spoiler. That. Funny how his mechanics work really well. Yeah, for only one level because you yeah. don't play him again because he oh. dies. Um, but no, he felt great. Like, again, the characters felt great. Just obey the rules of your universe. That's really off-putting. Do you and think he can come back? No. No way. Yeah. That's never happened in comics ever. Uh, and Captain America's never come back from being bad or being dead. Or, ever. or missing an arm. Yeah. Or someone else. Yeah. Uh, so another thing that really uh, got my goat, because I'm 80. A goat getter? Um, <laughs> how many freaking items were there to collect? There was like... 13 different vials, crystals, coins, whatever. And I, all right, it's a beta, so we don't know what they all do. But come on, like, streamline. You don't need 13 of them. I knew what they all did by the end. Really? Yeah, I was collecting them and loving them. Yeah. Do you know your progress of... doesn't carry over, by the way? It, is, it said it did in, no. the, in the thing. No, no, I don't think it, it did. carry over. I did like those finisher moves once you weak people down and you get to, like, do finishes. Yep. Um, the Hulk ones are just the most brutal things in the world. And again, they can get up after it. Oh, sometimes, yeah. Exactly. Kamala Khan, when, when she grows massive and she just, like, you get that satisfaction and she just grows massive and all she does is, like, just stomp on a tank. And I'm like, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> How good is the thunderclap, like, for, for the Hulk? Yeah. Where you just, like, wind up and then just hit him with that sonic boom thunderclap. I love it. And I like Thunder. that when you, when you do it. Thunder. A, where you can upgrade Thunderclap. Ho! When you do a small, uh, a light hit, and if you keep your finger on it, you can like some characters can grab because Kamala does the big fist and grabs them. Yeah, and then you can like hurt them while you're holding them, or you can like throw them around or use them as a projectile. Like, there's so many cool ways to play this game. Now, Dan mentioned before at the each end of each mission, you're asked to rate out of five. That's um, weird. What did you write? Well, it's a bad idea. I want feedback. What did you rate most of your? I, none of them got a five. Um, Hardly, I mine were basically threes and twos. Yeah, same. Just, be, just <laughs> because, like, of oh, the story missions, I was like four. I thought they, the, the story missions are great, um, and there will be more of those like as, as it goes on. But I understand what they're doing here. They're going to keep releasing, like you know, uh, just like Warframe. Just so there's levels if you want to like grind and get get that new item or that new costume, and you need some more XP. There will just be levels that you just replay over and over again. But you can play, replay with four friends, which would make it really fun. And like in um, Warframe as well, I think as well, they'll have a hardness level. So you can push up the hardness 
for the level. So you can do really chronic hard versions of them with you and all your mates overpowered. Yeah. That's what, yeah. And, yeah, this, I can't even imagine how many more characters they're going to put in. Like, yeah, see, that's the one thing that really bothered me. All right, we know Spider-Man's coming. Um, and and he's only coming. He's only coming to PlayStation. Uh, Dupe. That means <laughs> that he's not part of the main storyline, which means all these characters coming in are going to have to have little side missions. Mm. Brayden? Floppy had his hand up as well, but I'll jump quickly because I think you were, you were going for the same thing here, Flop. Mm-hmm. Timed exclusive? Oh, no. So Spider-Man is 100% just PS4. Okay. Yeah. Because Spider-Man's on PS4 already. That's yeah. a, it's the world he lives That's in. But my point being, like, if he's additional content, then he's not part of the main campaign. See, this is the thing, though. So what we're seeing here, so you've got your main campaign that is on release, but then they're expanding upon that with each of these people. Yeah, they could so keep doing campaigns. They've, they've said when they revealed Hawkeye and said he's coming that there's going to be Hawkeye-exclusive missions. But yeah, exclusive it, missions, but you played the missions. This is like something that I'm gonna I what? was gonna talk about in a sec, where you're playing your own little Hawkeye story, but then he's part of the crew. I After that, yeah. When you're on the helicarrier, uh, I love how everyone's got their separate dorms, mm-hmm. and there's just a couple dorms with no signs on Yeah, like basically, all. you'll do a story mission with a new character, which will like, unlock a whole story, but at the end of it, you'll be able to just use them as a character in your Avengers team. You'll pick your character. But then, mm. what I'm hoping... I'm just going to say my bit now, sorry. No, it's uh, fine. Because my main bit was um, my hope for this is that they are just going to continue to like grow and grow this out. Um, whether that ends up being a case of <coughs> once they've introduced a couple of more characters, they do something where they go, hey, here's the next major part of our overall storyline. And whether that be a free update or whether that be a $20 story thing to expand it, I don't care. I'm so excited. They said it's all going to be free every yeah. update. All right. I'm flopping down the line. Um, so most of what I sort of had and felt about it has already been covered not once but twice sometimes. Um, I, look, I really enjoyed it. It made me want to play the game even more when it comes out. I'm probably going to do this over things like Cyberpunk and stuff like that because um, it looks so much fun. Mm. It's nice. It's simple enough um, and it looks fun. I have the same uh, thoughts on things like the characters, the way they play, the differences that they have between them, their move sets, and all of that. Um, the one thing that I really... I really liked that no one else has actually mentioned was the upgrade system. So with all the little things that you collected and it it was kind of like uh, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 where you could go real deep into it and you could match your own little upgrades to the little things that you wanted to get specific sort of buffs and things like that or you could go hold L2 and it will automatically do it for you for like a... uh, a, a, um, Like here here is the best thing that you can do out of a basic set and go. And it just let you automatically update because I can't be bothered going into the nitty gritties of the uh, of the real deep in uh, upgrade systems. Yeah, you, it looks like you can get seriously deep into a yeah. lot of tiny minuscule details. Absolutely. Um, so I really like that that was an option. You could go really deep into it and and get all your different little buffs that you want to get, or or you could just go cool auto upgrade me. Mm. Um, all right. So I guess overall, who's going to purchase it? Uh, hands down a million percent I already have. <laughs> I have it's gonna come free on PS5 I reckon <laughs> free <laughs> free yeah, it's gonna be built in like Alex the Kid <laughs> Alex the Kid yeah I said I'm perfect Alex, okay. oh that's mm, triggers look at the glitch in the All footage right, so, we got here of that robot that's just not falling over yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that happened I, mine as well. I, I, yeah same I, I don't think I'll get this I, I, I think really well well, there's four of us and how are we gonna have a team if you don't get <clears> it you <throat> Turk well buy it for me um, because because I'm coming off Ghost of Tsushima. I'm still not out of Act 1 in Ghost of Tsushima. There's so much for me to play, and I have very precious little time. I want to play a game that I thoroughly enjoy, like Ghost of Tsushima. This one just didn't grab me. It's not my type of game. It, you know, if I didn't have anything else to play, if Ghost of Tsushima didn't just come out, um, then you know I might look at it. But it's just... it's All right, this sounds really bad, but it's just too video gamey. <laughs> it, it, it's just... You know, it. you are just playing a linear path video game. I think that's why I liked it. You know it's a video game, right? <laughs> that's what I said. Like, <laughs> like, I understand where you're coming from and you, you're trying to be smarmy. But you, you my point is... What, smarmy? What, you have not my... your type of game that you enjoy. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's, so like, you... it's just not for me. I did say at the start, it's not really my type of game. Are you looking for something a little more in-depth? 
I'm looking for something that... Uh, Let's move on. I can, yeah, all right, we will. But I will just say, I'm looking for something that I can get uh, invested in. And I wasn't invested in this. Fair enough. You want to be wooed by it. Yeah, like, you know, give me something different. I like That's why I like indie games, because mm. they do things different. This just feels very A, B, C, D. All right, it's time for deals. Deals. Yeah, I really do. thought that you no, were going to go deals really loud, and I was deals. Oh shit! <laughs> there you go. All right, play, uh, play, 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 play the deals. Hit we, me with the deals. What have we got on deals for PlayStation this week? Uh, first one off the ranks is Micro Machines World Series. Uh, wicked bargain at four dollars and eighty-eight cents. Have you guys ever played one of the Micro Machines games? Yeah, yep. they, they are play. so much fun, yeah, and good. they look. Cool. I didn't even know that they did new Micro Machines games. Yeah, this came out PS4, Xbox One. But yeah, PS4, I've got it for $4.88 down from $13.95. Um, it is... Oh, man, my screen just went blank. Uh, you can play one to four players, local co-op. So much fun. Great if you've got a couple of mates around. Um, next one is one that I've been eyeing off for a while and I really wanted to play. I've only ever played a little bit of it. I'm probably going to buy it now. Is Kingdom Come Deliverance, and this is the Royal Edition. It's twenty four ninety five down from like fifty five bucks. Uh, it's an open world RPG, fifteenth century Bohemian peasant simulator. I've played this. Oh, it's pretty funny. I love the fact that it's got all the DLCs, including one called The Amorous Adventures of Bold Sir Hans Capon, and you get to play a blacksmith's son named Henry, who's a bit shit. He's, he's, he's rubbish. Well, it's 15th century medieval. Everyone had a little bit of shit on him. Yeah, so, God, gross. I, um, I stopped playing it because, like, I was friends with this castle. And then I actually. You were friends with the castle? With, like, this, you know, Weird. I was. Uh, was his aligned, name Rocky? <laughs> I was aligned with him, with them. And then I, I accidentally went, went through the wrong door and they decided it was that. And they kicked me out of the castle and all my like, my quest lines were, like, ended and stuff. And I was like, what? You and then the- I went, it wouldn't let me reload it. It's just like, sorry. <laughs> you went through the wrong door, man, so you should have been kicked out. That was 15th it's got century. Great graphics of this game, eh? Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to get this. I really, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, next one for the PlayStation, the last one for PlayStation, is the Kerbal Space Program, which is uh, 15 bucks down from 60 so massive bargain. Uh, now, Brayden, I think you're a bit of a fan of the Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, these games are great fun. Um, so if you're someone who just likes space and playing around with spaceships and stuff, uh, this is basically a build-your-own-spaceship simulator. Um, You go choose all your separate little parts and then once you think you can try and do something with it, uh, you put it out in the launch pad, you shove a little green Kerbal in it and uh, try and get him to survive. So is a Kerbal like a minion? A Kerbal is kind of like a minion, but not shit. <laughs> okay. But not, are you sure? Yeah, because th- they were well before minions and uh, they are just way nicer. They're nowhere near as insufferable. What would you say would be the success rate of the uh, ships that you build? About this? 98% unsuccessful. <laughs> Because you will play around and then you'll get to the launch pad and you'll go and you'll be like, oh, I didn't hook up the fuel line. Or you you, you super did and it just explodes. <laughs> this thing can kill frame rates in a second, depending on how many rockets you put on it. I think you've just sold it to me. Yeah, it's yeah. very fun. And it's dirt cheap sale. So these games like this, like, um, uh, what is it? Totally Accurate Battle Simulator yeah. or whatever it's called. They're so fun and stupid. Yeah, you just play around with it for like twenty minutes, half an hour, and then jump in another time. Good enough. It's cheaper than an espresso martini. You know, it's an espresso, not an espresso. But cool. Uh, Xbox espresso. coming to Games Pass. Uh, Dark Pictures Anthology: The Man of Medan. Uh, this is something that I played. I really like these kind of games. If you liked Until Dawn, it's not quite as good as Until Dawn. <laughs> But it's that sort of style of thing. It's a horror, suspense-filled game. Uh, you're making choices, playing different characters, very story-driven, uh, very character-driven. I really liked it, and I'm looking forward to the new one that's coming out this year. No, I didn't think. I'm not looking forward to it. You know, yeah. That's okay. We're allowed to it, like different uh, things. It's uh, the man of Milady. They go around just tipping the hat, <laughs> Be- being really I sexist. tipping the hat. Stupid. I love it. I'll tip <laughs> your hat. Milady. Um, the other thing coming to Xbox Game Pass, which I was surprised to see, was Final Fantasy VII HD. Like, I had to look twice to make sure I read it right. Um, so, the original Final Fantasy, or the remake that came out on the PS4 for, of the original Final Fantasy VII, uh, I thought that was a cool move. I didn't think that was, I didn't think that had ever happened, being such an iconically PlayStation game. Yeah, uh, well, I think they're getting all of them. I, I think Square Enix is just going, hey, remember money? 
Yeah. Did we um did we email Square Enix to ask them if we're allowed to use it? Oh, oh, sh- oh, oh sh- we need oh. to get the footage with the cosplay one. Oh, they can't ban us from Twitch. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, sure. yeah, cool. Um and the third thing coming to Xbox this month is the new Battletoads with the the whole three player beat 'em up Battletoads game. This yeah. looks shit. I hate the look of this. Really? Yeah, I don't like it. Oh, that looks funny. This animation is it, crisp though. No, it looks like an adult swim card or something, like power power. Powerpuff? Powerpuff? Girls. Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, I don't like that either. Oh, I do. Well, it's personal taste. It is, exactly. Uh, I thought the actual game looks great when it actually shows it. Yeah, see, it. I think it looked too busy. Yeah, like, that's the, the whole point. What I, what I liked about the original Battletoads, <laughs> the, there weren't a lot of sprites on screen. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, look, I'll play this because it's on Games Pass and that means it's free, right? Yeah. That's how that's how it works. Good yeah. Lord. Okay, yeah, there is a lot happening on this screen. Yeah, Isn't see what just, I mean? Like, the characters lost. are the I same that, colour as the background and nah. you can get lost. I feel if you're what, playing it, though, and you're watching your character, these bits look great. I don't know. Hover bikes. Mm, mm, they, bad memories about They that. get into it about. Um, and then over to the Switch. We got some cracker deals on the Switch, man. We have uh, first off the ranks, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Dan, do you want to do it? Objection! Yeah. Uh, for 20 bucks, down from 40, so half price. This thing is great. If you've never played a Phoenix Wright game and you have a Switch, you need this. It is so much fun. Go out there, solve crimes, and, and uh, Not bad look for a 15 year old game. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I like, you know that you, if you played it on the, on the DS, you could yell objection at the microphone. Do you know what's even better than that? What's that? Grabbing a skateboard and becoming Attorney Hawk, skateboarder <laughs> at law. If only we get a graphic Damn, for that right Damn. now. I got a shirt. I got an Attorney Hawk shirt. I'm not wearing it, but come yeah, summer, are. I'll be wearing my Attorney Hawk. <laughs> attorney Hawk, skateboarder at law oh, shirt. It's such a good one. Uh, so next up on the Switch was a Sega Mega Drive Classics. Uh, so 30 bucks down from 60 bucks, another half price one. Uh, but you got 50 titles on this, like 50 games. Uh, so you got Streets of Rage yeah, 2. Yeah, but they're Sega games, so they don't really Sonic? count as a whole game. Oh, you got Sonic, though. You got uh, shooters, you got beat em ups, you got puzzlers, you got everything on this. Um, oh, for 30 yeah. bucks for 50 games, that's awesome. So you wouldn't buy that? You wouldn't play that? For like, it's got 40 on them, which is great. It needs to be about $10 cheaper. Uh, Braden would play it. He'd buy it. Toad Jam and Earl. Look at that. Um, the other one that caught my eye on the Switch now, I haven't played this and I don't know what it is, but I want to just by the description. It's called Not Tonight. It's three dollars forty nine down from thirty five bucks. Uh, oh, so a yeah. wicked it. bargain. I'm thinking it. And it's a post Brexit. You're picking it up. Yep. I know this game. Post like Brexit papers, management please. game, and it fuses time pressure RPG with a politically charged story. It's I know like papers, a, please. Yeah, I know a couple of people that'll play the crap out of this. Oh, this will be great. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Do you know what else would be great? Money. Yeah, but also this segment. Damn. Versus the world. Perfect timing. <laughs> I like the way you tried to cover that up. It's time for Dan versus the world, where we have Dan up against the world, who are represented by Floppy and Brayden in the musical game challenge. I have three songs from video games history or video games future, one of the two, because there is no present. Uh, and like I've. And I will play the first five seconds of one of those songs. We go backwards and forwards for five turns between these two teams with... <laughs> Dan's asleep. Uh, <laughs> I've been cool. <laughs> oh, right. That's though? what that was. You're out of practice. Um, uh, so, yeah, they ask questions and I say yes or no and give them hints and then they, we choose. Anyway, after last uh, episode, we had Dan on 26 catching up on the world who was on 27. All right, gentlemen, are we ready for the first song? Never. Good. I'm glad. Here we go. Have you got that thing on? Yep. Just trying to get this to work. <laughs> it's not working. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. That's good. We'll, we'll go to this one. Thank you, Patreons. <laughs> Louder. So there is some music coming in. I think it's David Bowie. It's not far off. I thought I was going to stop it before one of you got it, but clearly I wasn't. Dan, question number one. Um, what is... I think I know it and I don't want to blow it, though. I'm just going to ask some questions. I know Brayden knows it. Well, then get him before Brayden gets it. You're one behind. This would be a chance to catch up. And yeah, we're running well, overtime. give him one if I don't know it. Well, then, so? Who cares? Uh, what, um, what console? 
Uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. What PlayStation? The original. The original. Huh. Yeah, it wasn't Floppy, what I thought. Floppy, you cool with this? <laughs> yeah, no, go for it, man. I don't know it. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. Correct. <laughs> what part did I miss? Dun 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 dun. I thought it was Halo. It was. No, so here's the thing. I thought it was Halo as well when it was doing the initial like. Whoa, well, that's all the like, only part noises. I heard. Yeah. All and right, here we like go. Two notes playing. Oh. Song number two. Mm. Song uh, question number one. <laughs> I didn't even hear yeah, it. Yeah, but Floppy knows it, so. <laughs> Keep playing if he knows it. It gives me a chance. Yeah, can't play some more for him. Is it, it is. Metal Gear Solid? The Phantom Limbs? <laughs> I don't know. What so is sad. Sorry, what? Question number. I, just, I guessed it. What did you say? I guess, I just Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Gear Solid, The Phantom Limbs? <laughs> Not The Phantom Limbs. What's, what's it called then? Uh, the Phantom... Pain. Pain. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, that- yeah Dan won that one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to Wait. Wait. Do we remember a Christmas Fan- show Phantom when Earth. I lost on a... Oh. Yeah, do we remember who runs this show? Uh, yeah, so Dan's on 27 the and the world's on 20. He's still in the lead. Jeez, calm down. Here we go. Song number three. <laughs> That's very boring for the podcast listeners. Question number one, Dan. Uh, I don't know what this one is. So what um, genre of video game are we talking about here, mate? Uh, it is a, a stealth game. Ooh. Oh. Like. <laughs> through Dan, I think. Why are you so pink, Braden? Yeah, I'm trying to fix it, hey. <laughs> uh, well, saturation. No, because that just makes me look like that. Other way. What console did it come out on? <laughs> uh, the MSX. Damn it. Question number two. MSX. Yep. Stealth. Yep. Is it Metal Gear? Nope. Oh, well, I've fucked it's it. Metal Gear 2. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, you didn't let me finish talking. Yes, you did because you said, oh, I fucked that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round of Dan vs. the World, we have Dan on 27 and the World on 29. That has to be the quickest Dan vs. the World ever. Good. I would like to thank the Patreons. Good. Thank you. I like them as well. So do I. How do you feel about the Patreons, Floppy? Cool, guys. I also enjoy Patreons and the money that they give us in order to produce this fine show. Who who are the people who who give us money? Thank you to Sam Beard. Thank you to Todd Randall. Thank you to Tommaso. Thank you to Michael Town. Thank you to Karen Knight. Thank you to Ash Knight. Thank you to Dylan Stevens. Thank you to Carlin Bud. And thank you to Game Boy Dad. You are our top tier Patreons. We love you so much. If you'd like to help us over on Patreon, if you'd like to see... You like what you've seen tonight? Head over there, throw us some bucks. If you can't, don't worry. Just watch us free on Twitch or VOD on YouTube. And we've got Dino More coming back for all our Patreons. Woo! That's right. Patreon exclusive show coming really, really soon. So head on over to patreon.com backslash hack the dino, sign up, and you can get exclusive content like this. <laughs> Jesus. That really, that was piercing. I'm glad we're going to hear that three times this next two weeks. <coughs> Do you want to see my exclusive content? No, but I'd oh. like to hear what else you've got pluggable wise. Oh, pluggable. Uh, uh, you can shoot over to Instagram, check us out at Floppy Plays Games, have a look at some of the things that I, I purchase, I own, I play sometimes, uh, occasionally finish, and just stuff I like because it's cool. Uh, Dan, you got anything to plug? Um, if you like horror movies and stuff like that, please head over to uh, Terrorvision Horror Podcast, which is me and Jennifer the Batman Strand um, talking about horror films. It's an audio one, so we're on you know all the major podcasting services. Just search for Terrorvision Horror Podcast, and you'll find us. We also have a YouTube channel and a Instagram, and we've got an email. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So if you like horror, check it out. It seems good. It's weekly. Every Tuesday it goes up. Braden. 
Yeah, if you like movies that aren't horror movies, but also sometimes horror movies, but also not so much. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with the latest movie news, especially with movies coming back to theaters soon, fingers crossed, hopefully, we're wondering what's going on. Uh, you can go and check out Millennial Movie Talk, or MMT, uh, where myself and three of my mates, we all catch up and we talk about the latest and greatest in movie news and what we've been watching. And if you like retro, I do a thing where I talk about retro things with other people, like Dean Rankin, who's the artist on the, the Simpsons comics. He, he was a good time, and you can listen to that by searching Retro Trigger and all the other words that, that come alongside Retro Trigger, like... Dragon Retro. Ball Z. Yeah, that one. Do that. Anyway, we've been Hack the Dino. This has been our Critical Path and our new show. You can catch us on youtube.com backslash Hack the Dino. Please leave a comment. Please leave a little thumb up thingy and uh, subscribe and like and share with your friends and help us get that algorithm working for us because it's being very naughty. Uh, you can head on over to twitch.tv backslash Hack the Dino and follow us there. It doesn't cost you anything. Absolutely free, 100%. All you have to do is press the follow button to be notified when we go live because all of our live recordings are happening there now, baby. And if you don't like our faces, cool, completely understand. I get it. I hear it a lot. You can go to SoundCloud and you can go to Spotify and you can go to iTunes and you can just listen to us because one thing we do really, really well is words. So words are our thing. And if you like words as much as we like words, then our words are going to like your words. Thank words. you very much. Braden, please. <laughs>